Hello guys, welcome to Alistair Aquatics. I hope you're well. This video is going to be a bit different to my normal videos. It's going to be a bit more informal. It's just a quick pick up of the camera and off I go. I'm going to show you me feeding some of my tanks and just talk about generally what my plans are uh, in the future. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Something a bit different, something a bit more relaxed. And uh, let's go get on with it. So we're going to go feed uh, my two Tanganyikan setups. Okay guys, so let's see how they're doing. So here we have the Brashadi tank. And as you can see from my previous video, they've grown quite a lot. There is still some diatoms, especially in this tank on the right here. Um, but if you compare it to the last video I did on this tank, it's definitely starting to die off. It's just taking a little while. But the fish themselves, they're growing, uh, looking healthy as anything. And yeah, I'm really liking how this tank's going. Uh, it's gonna look really cool once the fish mature. And we move over to the other tank. And hopefully you guys will have recently seen the setup video of this tank as well. Um, both of these tanks, if you're interested, there are setup videos on my YouTube channel, so be sure to go and check those out. Um, but yeah, these fish are also doing well. The smaller Le Lupi are growing really nicely. And yeah, I still haven't got round to it. He's really hard to catch. That Brashadi there, who got beaten up originally in this tank, he will be moving back in there, which uh, will happen very soon. I'm planning on doing a big water change tomorrow. And these Judodochromis are getting along well. And um, like I said in my previous video, my long-term plan is to move these Judodochromis into a larger community setup downstairs. But I really love both of these tanks. Um, love the behavior of the fish, especially darting in and out of the rocks here in this tank on the left. And these guys is more of a species setup, uh, just because once they pair up, they're known to get really, really aggressive. Whereas uh, things like Le Lupi, I've actually seen a tank with a pair of Le Lupi and a pair of Judodochromis together. Um, so they're not quite as aggressive when breeding, but still, it's something you want to look out for if you're keeping tank and you can fish. So yeah, it's quite cool. Both of these tanks are dedicated currently to cichlids, um, African cichlids. These guys are from Lake Tanganyika. So um, again, a fish I haven't really kept before. I have quite a lot of experience uh, with these guys. I've worked with them in the past, but it's really nice to have a tank or two tanks dedicated to them. They're such interesting fish. I mean, the Lay Lupi, if you look at that yellow, that orange color, it's just stunning. Uh, you know, pretty much compares to me to like marine fish. So marine fish are normally more expensive, um, and have, but have those vibrant, vibrant colours. Um, and yeah, that Le Lupi to me seems to pretty much compare. And the Brashadi, when these guys are older, they're going to have absolutely amazing fins. One thing I find really enjoyable about these setups is uh, because all the sides are glass as well, you can stare right the way through, which is pretty cool. And I wonder if you guys see that right at the end. There's another little project. I'm really pleased with these tanks. These are Oase Starline 125 aquariums. And as I've mentioned in my last video, I will be doing a much more in-depth review of these tanks. But so far, I'm really happy with them. They have these great glass sliding lids. They have a built-in light unit, corner filter with a heater that sort of slots in the back there. So. One thing about these tanks is you can see the filter. Um, but I mean, you know, if you wanted to upgrade it and add an external filter, that's something I could think about doing in the future. It's not necessarily hard to do. Um, but one thing I really like about these filters, and I mentioned it more in the review, is um, this normally with an internal filter, taking it off to do maintenance can be a real pain. You know, the suction cups won't come off properly or water ends up everywhere but these um, are designed so that they just with a light pull come off and they're held actually on the sponge area is held on by magnets which is really cool really interesting um, and it's been really easy to maintain so far but yeah these tanks are an absolute joy to keep and you know this room just to give you guys an idea put the camera into sort of a wider mode so there are the tanks we've got a little office area here and a little chair. So coming down here, sit on this chair and you get a lovely view of the two tanks. 
So I'm sure you guys also spotted this little tank on the end. This is a nano reef tank. This is a fusion nano uh, 10 gallon uh, by Innovative Marine. Let's put a bit of light on this situation. For now, I've just got this Kessel Air 80 tuna blue over it. Um, nice little tank. I've made it a couple of little uh, sort of customizations. Um, so on the filter input there, I've just added a sort of filter guard and on the output, I've just added um, a random flow nozzle just to create random flow in the tank. Uh, it's meant to be quite a bit more healthy for uh, coral. And um, these products were from Dflow Designs, so I'll put a link to them uh, in the description below. Now, the moment I'm sure you guys have all been waiting for, let's give these guys some food. So a lot of the time I don't always show on camera you know, what goes into caring for these guys. I mean, I do sort of have done sort of guides on uh, water changes and things like that. And I normally show the feeding process, you know, uh, when I show off a tank. Um, but yeah, I mean, as I'm sure you guys all know, if you're watching this, if you're sort of been into the hobby for a while, if you're a beginner, maybe you don't, but in terms of maintenance for tanks, you wanna be doing a weekly water change. You wanna check your water parameters. And um, if you are starting off a new tank, be sure to look into cycling and understanding uh, beneficial bacteria and what things you're gonna be wanna test for when you do set up that new tank. But let's give these guys some food. So they're on um, quite a varied diet. I've got some tetramin flakes here. This is what they actually like the most at the moment, just because I think it's soft, it's really soft. I do have some cichlid flakes, but they're really quite hard and it takes a while for them to become softer in the water. I do also have frozen food and of course they love live food, but that's a bit more of a rare treat. So let's give these guys some food. Quite tricky here doing this with one hand on the camera. So these guys are still not 100% um, sort of outgoing. They're still a little bit shy, but when they notice there's some food around, you'll see in a sec, they should come up. I'd be happy to take it. There we go. Normally there is a little bit of chasing uh, during food time and they get a bit spooked. Um, but yeah, everyone's getting really well, no ripped fins. Yeah, it's quite funny, sort of every now and then they all dart back into the plants as if there's danger. Maybe it's, it's probably me, to tell you the truth. Um, yep, yeah, they all just sort of did it again. Or it might just be that one of them gets a bit spooked and they sort of use that um, sort of ability that fish do in terms of a school where if one fish makes a sudden movement they will follow it. I'm not sure. So if you guys have Tanganyikan cichlids and you've seen this before, you know, let me know because they do suddenly all, all of them almost dart behind the rock and then come back out. It might be me here making some noise or accidentally banging my feet around on the floor. But yeah, really interesting. Um, I've just realised now after doing that, that um, I've put in quite a bit of food, probably too much food. Um, yeah, with one hand, I think I got a little bit carried away. But luckily, the uh, water parameters in this tank are absolutely fine, and I'm gonna do a big water change tomorrow. So, it shouldn't be any problem. Right, let's move on over to these guys. Give these guys a bit of food. Um, these guys don't get as much. They're smaller fish, and there's only five of them in there. Here we go. Sit back and watch these guys. Uh, with all these fish, especially because they're young, I do like to feed them a couple of times a day if I get the chance, just because they're smaller fish and I want them to grow big and healthy. Uh, you know, I don't want them wanting for food too much. You don't want to see any sunken bellies or anything like that. Um, all my fish have nice plump bellies. It's something to really sort of bear in mind. You know, if you've got a fish, especially a young fish and it's growing, you know, you think about a, a young person, they're going to need lots, lots of food, lots of nutritious food in order to grow. You know, if you, if you feed them tiny amount and they're going hungry all the time you know it could really lead to some issues so yeah it's an important thing I think we all um, should think about when uh, feeding our fish okay guys thank you for watching um, I hope you enjoyed that it's just something a bit different just a real quick pick up the camera and go um, maybe this is something I should do more often 
uh, maybe I could do sort of talks on uh, certain topic areas. Uh, let me know in the comments, sort of leave any ideas you guys have, I'd really appreciate it. And um, consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed already. And until then, take care guys. Bye for now. See ya.